Hey guys, I'm Ezra, and in this Lord of the Rings Rise of War video, I wanted to find out if Spirits of the Wood, like the mercenary units, make sense if being played with Isildur. Isildur is kind of making them useful because he is providing a good amount of protection for them, but not just only that, he also has Arnor T4 units in his army, and those units provide the so desperately needed protection for the squishy spirits of the woods. And if you aren't playing Arnor, you can still make do with Gondor because Gondor has Swan Knights and they protect at least for the first three rounds the spirits of the wood. And I think those two factions, like Arnor being the best faction and then Gondor, make the most sense for Spirits of the Wood. And as you see, I am using the Madness Bomb build here. This goes actually very well with ranged units. So we have a bit of survivability with uh, Evade. Then we have our Madness Bomb with these two skills. Of course, a bit of survivability and damage boost with Great King. And while we are here, why not spend two points into King of All the Dunedines, one point into Dunedine Bloodline for the plus two attack for your Rangers of the North. And also we need burst damage mitigation with last alliance so our rangers of the north can tank as long as possible and don't worry because of my gear you will see my gear in the battle reports which we are entering right now and here we are our first fight is against the Khaldun. let's check out our gear first the gigantic hammer with rent and Orbach with fire protection just in case trapper's hood with hysteria and I just like Hysteria because this goes so well with Enfeeble. Where was it? Here it is. And also the plus attack, right, for your ranged units. Like you see, I am running a three ranged unit army. This is nothing but ranged units. So I have two squishy units that need protection, but I provide the protection with my rangers of the north. But we will come to these units in a moment. Let's follow up with the accessory. I have the wizard's fireworks with ranged might. And you see, we have a ton of plus attack for our ranged units. Like plus six attack here, plus three over here. This is giving them plus nine attack so far. And the last plus three here. And we have a total of plus 12 attack for our ranged units. And those units like Sentinels with uh, 100 units per command benefit a lot from the plus attack. So let's see, Sentinels have Dispersion. And then our Spirits of the Wood, they do so much. I, I just like these units. Their normal attacks deal 100% focus damage. So we are kind of able to deal direct damage to the HP of the enemy as long as they don't have focus protection or high alert. I like that a lot. But they are very squishy. You see only 30 defense and I'm giving them plus 15 defense with my gear. So they have a base defense of only 15. The damage plus the focus damage mechanic is crazy. They just need protection, which I am providing. And look at this, they have a big weakness being burn damage. Fortunately, we are kind of safe with our Arno T4 units protecting them and the Respect 5 title maxed out of Isidur plus the Horbeck with fire protection. These three mechanics are kind of keeping us safe. Let me just summarize again. Respect 5 title maxed out superior Horbach with fire protection and Arnor T4 units. So I have three barriers that are keeping my spirits of the wood safe. And then the regrowth talent is just giving us a bit more recovered troops. Like this is a nice special bonus to have. And uh, last but not least, natural power. So these units are a bit more bulky when fighting on non-structural land. But let's see if there is even need for this because the Arnor T4 units are tanking anyway. But unfortunately, there wasn't any other special effect that made more sense. But there is one, which is allowing you to deal a bit more damage whenever you are being healed. But Isidur can't heal if he doesn't have the Nightstar with rare reinforcement. I switched the rare reinforcement special effect with the plus attack of my Wizard's Firework. I just wanted to have flat damage increase for my whole ranged unit army. And I also tried out how rare reinforcement with uh, the... The healing over here works. It didn't work out like I thought it would. And my Arnor T4 units had even Haven, like the additional damage mitigation they receive whenever they are being healed. It didn't work out like I thought it would, which is why I had to switch the talents. So instead of Haven for my T4 units, I gave them the minus 15% damage received against melee units. And that forced me to also switch the special effect of my spirits. Anyway, long story short, let's move forward to the Rangers of the North. Just as I mentioned, light 
armor was chosen, I have no healing accessory. But I must say that these items worked much better than my Nightstar with the rare reinforcement and Haven for my T4 units and the healing ability for Spirits of the Woods. So these items you see here are much better than the ones I used before. So we are fighting against Khaldun. Let's check him out. He has a Cutlass with Melee Might. Scale May with Melee Vigor, Brutal Helmet with Melee Vigor as well, Drums of Moria and Haste of Soldiers. And you see he has like the pretty much the standard meta build for Khaldun. Albedeus with Eradicate, of course. Dragoons with Rupture, I assume. Yeah, but still not maxed out. And Champions with Rupture as well. All right, so let's jump over to the snapshot page. We have done around 290k damage versus around 120k damage. And in the detailed view, we see that our Sentinels did the biggest chunk of our damage. All right, that is a big surprise because I thought our Spirits of the Wood would deal more damage because of the focus damage, right? Khaldun has no elemental damage coverage as we have seen. So I guess that the champions with their challenge debuff hit our Spirits of the Wood more than our Sentinels after the Rangers of the North were killed and therefore their damage got cut in half. So this is how I can explain the low damage number over here. But anyway, this was a good report. It's just a bit expensive, you know, like you have to go over to Lindon or Arno territory just to get these mercenary units and also Arno T4 units. It's a lot of work just to get this result. I mean, we can have other workarounds to have a result close to this, but it's still looking good. Next fight is against Grimar. All right, gear wise, nothing has changed. We have like the exact same gear on and the special effects of our units um, haven't changed as well. It is exactly the same. I'm just gonna do this one more time, but then like we don't need to look at uh, our units. We know they are the same. Let's jump over to the enemy and see what he has done. Cutlass with melee might, scale may with melee vigor, Osman's helm with warding. So he isn't safe against our madness bomb, that is for sure. And smoking pipe with sustain. But it is pretty much a standard meta build Grima. Let's check out the units, eradicate, and then of course, Heartseeker because of the follow-up and Champions with Rise Up. And as you see, guys, this is what we were capable of. Unfortunately, Grima didn't equip Resolve or Aegis, so that could have looked much different if he protected himself against Madness. And there was also a crazy Grima player with uh, Mountain Trolls and the special effect Staggering Blow, I think was it? Like the one where Mountain Trolls get a 50% chance to stun a unit for a round. I would have liked to see a report with that troop composition, like with the Mountain Trolls and Staggering Blow. And I think he had three units. It was Mountain Trolls with Staggering Blow, Champions of course, and the rest were filled with a huge number of Reapers with follow-up. And this is just a side note, I would have liked to see another report with a Grima like that and also with Resolve or Aegis. Anyway, let's jump into the snapshot page. Let's see, we have done almost 250k damage versus 130k-ish damage. And in the detailed view we see that this time our Spirits of the Wood have done the biggest amount of our damage. Next up is Saruman and oh boy do I like Saruman. Unfortunately not many people play him. It is very sad since Saruman is a solid commander when being played right. Here we have a good example, like as you see Saruman is holding his own ground, this is what he is capable of and he is under level. Like imagine how strong he can be if he were at my same exact level. Let's check out his gear. He has Easterling Spear with Mounted Might, he has Scale May with Melee Vigor, Horseman's Helm with Mounted Vigor and Smoking Pipe with Sustain. Alright, so you see these are his skills. I still need to do a deep dive about Saruman guys. So. I can't really explain if this is meta built or not, but it, it looks kind of decent, right? Like it makes sense. He has Palantir Scryer to provide damage mitigation for his units and also 25% chance of succumbing to madness for two rounds. Like it is dangerous for himself, but only if he is doing damage by himself. Like if he was to max out of many colors, that's where this madness on Saruman himself becomes dangerous. Right now he is in his troop boosting build, so this isn't really hurting him. I, I like what he has done here. 
is just boosting the damage of his troops. And fanatism is boosting it as well. Voice of Saruman is just giving him a 30% chance of making my units fall victim to madness on each round, like two of my units. That is kind of crazy. And when maxed out, all of my units on each round, like for the whole of the battle, 10 rounds. That is good. And also Soul Siphon, this is his damage dealing and self-sustain as well. So whenever he falls victim to his own madness, he could potentially hurt himself and maybe also heal my units. I'm not quite sure how it works when he is uh, inflicted with his own madness. And then he has Sharky. This is a buff for his uh, Orcs, Urukai, and Evil Man units. Let's check out his units. He has Divide and Conquer for us, Vargan Riders. He then has Dragoons with Solid Metal. And then he has Champions with Divide and Conquer. All right, then let's check out the snapshot page. We have done almost 220k damage versus 155k-ish damage. And in the detailed view, we see, oh boy, we, we actually lost quite a few Spirits of the Wood. I didn't expect that. Maybe this was because of the madness procs of Saruman, like for the 10 rounds, a 30% chance that each of my units fall victim to madness. That is kind of dangerous. We can only protect ourselves against Madness for the first three rounds with Resolve or for the first four rounds with Aegis. But what about the rest of the rounds? We are vulnerable against his Madness, right? Here we are having a fight against Black Serpent. Let's see what gear he has. It's a Gigantic Hammer, Giant's Power. And then Scale May with Melee Vigor, Bone Mask with Manipulate, and last but not least, Bone Talisman with Evil Man Strength. And as you see, he is running his Black Serpent uh, mainly in his respect 3 build, focusing on Evil Man. And he has some leftover points, which he redistributed to his respect 5 title to get some passive healing with resupply. All right, let's check out the units. Albedius with Divide and Conquer, so it's not Eradicate. Dragoons with Preservation. Perseverance, perseverance. I don't know how to pronounce this. And then champions with divide and conquer. As you see, he is causing quite some problems against us. I assumed that we would do much better than this. Like we have spirits of the wood, which deal focus damage. We should be able to punch through the thick armor of black serpent, right? Maybe he has high alert, right? Where is it? All right, it is high alert. So my bad, this makes totally sense. He is protected against elemental damage. So no wonder he achieved this result. In the snapshot page, we have done only 130k -ish damage versus almost 150k damage. So it looks like this build is kind of being countered by Black Serpent. In the detailed view, we see like not just only our armor T4 units were wiped out, but our Spirits of the Wood also took a big hit, which is why they couldn't deal a lot of damage. And also, let's not forget about Haven. It is cutting down the damage by 50%. Now, here we are fighting against the Witch King. And the reason why we are winning over here is because of the Hallback with Fire Protection, of course. And we have the Aegis Helmet right now, just to be safe against the first round stun of the Witch King, if he has the Nazgul Screech. Yep, he has it. So our units aren't stunned in round one and they can deal damage as well. Let's check out the gear of the Witch King. It is Cutlass with melee might, Scale May with melee vigor, Bone Mask with manipulate, Drums of Moria and Taste of Soldiers. And as you see, this Witch King has a lot of respect. He has skilled the most important skills. He needs his convener. He has the Nazgul Screech and also the additional elemental damage with Ring Wraith. All right, cool. Let's check out the Alchemists. They have Light Armor. Interesting. I thought like Alchemists like to go with the special effect that is letting them deal additional damage whenever a target is inflicted by stun, madness or can't recover HP. You know, just to have a bit more bursty damage. Corsairs with Traveling Light. I would have preferred the follow-up, but maybe the follow-up is in conflict with Convener, since Convener is already allowing them to attack twice. But what about the rest of the rounds, you know, like the rounds after round three, you still want a chance to have follow up, right, with Corsairs? Maybe that is a waste of damage there. I'm not quite sure. You Witch King main players out there, let me know in the comment sections below. Does it make sense to go with defensive option and traveling light? Or should you focus on the follow up special effect over here? And the last units, like the Crushers, they have this special effect being Rupture. And let's see, like, what results do we have here in the snapshot page? We have done almost 
300k damage versus around 115k damage. Like our Arno T4 units are very likely to die in each battle, which is why you have to reproduce them on a daily basis. These guys protect the other two units, which is why you just can't take a break from conscripting them. Always keep producing your Rangers of the North. Let this be my last report. We are up against the Sauron. Let's check out the gear quick. I have um, swept my Aegis with Trapper's Hood, which was a big mistake. Against Sauron, you need Aegis or at least Resolve, or you end up nuking yourself. Like, this is what's going to happen right now. Isildur is nuking himself. And Sauron, he actually has the Ancient Numenorean Helmet with Tranquility. Do you know what that means? It means that he is removing the madness on round one for each of his units while applying madness on our units so we have lost the madness fight here that's something i see immediately he has the cover of a smite protection of numenor with resilience of evil man and then smoking pipe with sustain and you see he is going with a hybrid build like his sauron is ready for any commander with this build i could have changed the outcome of this build if i had the aegis helmet and also focus protection with my quilted armor but that wasn't the case anyway the troops albedias have eradicate the dragoons have rupture and the champions have rupture all right then let's jump over to the snapshot page and see we have done only 205k damage versus 280k ish damage so this is a big loss for us our economy suffered a lot like um, our mercenary units over here they take quite a lot of gold to conscript and that is a big hit to our economy in the detailed view we see that yeah our sentinels may have done the biggest chunk of our damage but it just wasn't enough to survive this fight. We nuked ourselves. To summarize this video, does it make sense to run Isildur with Spirits of the Wood? I mean, not quite. I'm still not very happy with the outcome of these reports. Whenever you protect your Spirits of the Wood with, be it Arno T4 units or Gonda T4 units, you can give it a try. But even then, you still need to locate them, which is like in Lindon or in Arnor territory, which is a long travel. Is it worth the travel? If you ask me, it's not. But if you were spawn in Lindon or Arnor anyway, you can give it a try. They are kind of okay against commanders who don't have like elemental damage coverage, but only under the circumstance that you keep them protected. You know, with Rangers of the North or Swan Knight. And there you go. This is Isidro with Spirits of the Wood. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing. I see you guys next time.